the takeover. Okay, Wait, did we start? Yeah, we did. Okay, um, are we on? Did we start? We're on. This is it. We're going, right? Let's welcome. All right. Clap, clap me. In. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Welcome back to the takeover, guys. We're here and it's a good Monday because it's Super Bowl Monday. It's Super Bowl Monday. And what does that mean? That means the most shits are taken today. That the and that's a real fact. I didn't make it up. You can Google it. I didn't Google it. I just know it from history of life. That's a real thing to know things from the history of life. But today is the biggest anti-acid day, right? Or the pills you would take to help you poop or Pepto-Bismo. More Pepto-Bismo is bought and purchased today than any other day in the year because everybody had pizza yesterday. Most people had pizza and wings. What would you say is probably the biggest food? What's the most, what, what, what's the most popular food on Super Bowl Sunday? What do you think? Pizza. You think it's pizza. Some people might say wings, pizza. I'll tell you what it was for me. Here, first of all, before we get into the Super Bowl itself, I did Chick-fil-A. And some of you are like, how did you do Chick-fil-A, Mike? It's because I think ahead. I think ahead all the time. I'm always looking ahead and I want things to be the best for the memory. It's always for the memory and for what is, what's the environment gonna be. So I had people, I hosted, I had people come over and there's Chick-fil-A. And then they're like, well, how did that happen? How could you do Chick-fil-A if it's Sunday? Because everybody knows Chick-fil-A is closed on Sunday. But I, then I could be like, well, not, is it really closed? It's not necessarily closed. Maybe they opened specially for me. Because then now people think I'm special. So now I created a thing where people think I'm special because Chick-fil-A opened specifically only for me. But that's not what really happened. But you can create that. It's like creating a show. It's like creating this podcast. This is our second week. We're already getting better. It's running smoothly. We're excited about our guests. We'll get into that too. I'm still talking about the Chick-fil-A. How did I get the Chick-fil-A? I got it Saturday night before. That's what you do. You think ahead. And then you're like, well, was the chicken good, still fresh? It wasn't. It's not that it's not fresh. You just have to know how to prepare it. So when it gets delivered to you, you set it up, you put it over tinfoil, you let it cool off for a couple hours. Then you put it in the fridge. The next day you wake up, you take it out of the fridge, you put it on a pan, and then you put it in the oven at 350 for like 12 minutes, and then it's like they're brand new. And then you serve it, and then people are like, wow, you must be pretty special that Chick-fil-A served you on Sundays, and everybody knows Chick-fil-A's closed on Sundays. How did you do this? But now you know my secret, and now you'll do it ahead of time. Because that's what it should be. Chick-fil-A is the best thing to have on a Super Bowl Sunday game. Okay? How was the game? It was fine. It's the game I watched the least. Of all the football games, everybody knows I'm obviously a big football fan. Obviously. I watch every fucking Dolphins game by myself. I'm watching it, and I don't want to be disturbed. But the Super Bowl is like the game I watched the least. I'm not even paying attention most of the time. Most of the time, I'm just like... Like, just making sure everybody's having a good time. I actually drink. I, I usually don't drink during football games. I like to kind of just watch the game and enjoy the game. But Super Bowl Sunday is a party. It's a holiday, and I'm eating a lot, and I like to indulge, and I use it as an excuse to eat bad. And I know that we want to work on not eating bad because it's harder to stay fit later on in life. And then we have to work it off harder during the week, which we also have talked about before. Eating bad sometimes is good because it makes you want to work out harder. So that's what we're doing on this Monday. This Monday is a good day to start your workout regimen. Get better. Get back, get on track because you ate really bad yesterday. So it's fine. I indulge. I eat really bad. And I don't stop. I go the whole time. I, I don't stop eating. And I'm missing part of the game. But I'm still kind of paying attention. I thought overall the game was fine. I thought it was fine. Did the team win that I didn't want to win? Yes. Is that a big deal? No. Am I going to let it bother me? No, because it's, it's about the environment that we had. We had a good time. We had a good time, but I still kind of woke up today feeling sad. I felt sad today when I woke up. And I don't normally ever wake up feeling sad, but today was more like, uh, why do I feel this way? And it made me think, okay, it's just a speed bump in the road. That's what it is. We have speed bumps in life. Okay, every day you're driving and sometimes maybe you're taking a shortcut and that shortcut has a speed bump, right? We know what speed bumps are. It's when the city is telling you, hey, we don't want you even going a little fast. 
We don't want you going a little fast and we want to slow things down. And we know that you have a destination and we know that you have an idea of where you want to be, but we're going to slow you down from getting to that destination. And we don't know why we're being slowed down. Maybe it's for a better cause. And that's with life too. Maybe when you hit a speed bump in life, maybe there's a reason you're hitting that speed bump. Maybe it's because, you know, something is not going right and you're supposed to sell, you're supposed, you have to slow. Does this make sense? Trust me, it will make sense when it gets to the end. Right now, life will throw you speed bumps because you have to slow down because at the end of the day, you're going to get to a certain point in your life where you reach your destination and you're going to look back on those speed bumps and you're gonna be like, I'm glad I hit those speed bumps. It made me a better person. It's what I needed. And life gives you speed bumps and you need them and it puts things in perspective and sometimes humbles you, but you know you're gonna get over them. You're gonna get over the speed bumps, especially if you're in a car. All cars get over speed bumps. How many times has a car ever not gotten past the speed bump? Now, in the history of life, has that probably happened? Yes. In all of life, everything has happened. There's everything, everything possible has happened in life. If we're gonna argue that, if that's your argument. I'm just saying, we can get over these speed bumps in case there's someone watching who's arguing with me. I always assume there's someone arguing with me when they're watching the show. I assume that they're like, okay, what is he even talking about? That's not true what he's saying. Well then if you're one of those people saying that that's not true, yeah, you're right. There are speed bumps that actually, actually stop cars and cars don't get over them. But for the metaphor of life, we're going to get over the speed bump. If you don't, then you probably d died or something. You know what I mean? But that's sad to even think that. Here we are two weeks in a row talking about someone dying and we don't want to do that because we don't want to stay positive, but we're going to work out and we're going to work out this Monday and every Monday, everybody's got to start working out because that's how you start your week. You got to start your week going. Okay. Now, if you're watching this, it's Wednesday, so you're a little behind, but that's why you watch the show because I take over your week because your week wasn't going as well as you wanted it to, right? Your week's not going great. So you need me to take over the week. So that's why I'm here. So we take over the week and I'm telling you that there's things that we don't want to do necessarily. Like for me, when I work out, I don't feel like working out sometimes. Sometimes working out feels like a job. It really does. I don't enjoy it. Now I'm not saying that I don't necessarily enjoy working. Like there aren't times when I actually do enjoy working out. There are times when I'm like, okay, I'm in the pocket and working out feels good right now. Okay. Um, a lot of times though, there are there are moments where like, I don't feel like working out and I have to push myself, right? And that's a real thing because I'm not thinking about what the ultimate feeling is of working out. And for me, and I'm being real now, I felt like I started off silly, but now I'm in the pocket with you guys right now. I'm being real about the working out thing is for me, it's when I, I've worked out really hard and then I take a shower afterwards, I, I, I wash up and then, and I put my underwear on and then I'm sitting down and I'm, I, and I'm putting my pants on and I feel, I feel the tightness in my, that's, that moment is priceless for me. The moment of like, I'm done with my night and I'm, I took a shower, I'm washed up and I got my underwear on and I'm putting my pants on and I'm just chilling for the night. The way my body feels, that's like pure ecstasy. That's the ultimate feeling I could, the most, that's the best feeling I could ever have. Like there's nothing that's going to top that because that is what we do it for. That's why I work out. But I don't even think about that moment. I rarely think about that feeling. Even when I'm working out, that's what I forget to think about. And I think we do that with life too. I think sometimes we forget why we're doing something, right? Why are we, why are we uh, working towards something? Why are we uh, like, you know, whatever our goals are, we might understand the big goal, the ultimate goal we have, but sometimes in little things in life, we forget why we're even doing it and it's for that feeling. Like, why is that our goal, for instance? I don't know if this makes sense right now, but I'm trying to make it make sense. Like, for instance, like, let's say your goal is like, oh, I want to one day uh, travel to Italy, whatever, a weird goal, sure. But why do you want to go to Italy? Is it to see Italy or is it for the feeling that you'll have when you're actually in Italy eating a slice of pizza? That's the feeling you don't even think about. But when you get to that feeling, then you're reminded about, oh, that's why I did this. I did it for this euphoric feeling. And that's ultimately what I'm trying to say. And I think this all made sense. And I think that we're all better for listening to this podcast. I think that's why you listen. I think that I make everyone a better person. Is that a little conceited? Maybe, but I'm just trying to, you know, spread the message. That being said, I'm going to be rich one day because I invested in Doge, Dogecoin. 
Dogecoin. Dogecoin. Do Dogecoin. Dogecoin. I did it. I did it. And do I know what I'm talking about? No, but it's for pure entertainment too. What's $150 to me? A lot right now, especially in a pandemic, but it's also, I've gotten $150 worth of entertainment off of it. It's been fun to watch. Now Mark thinks that I'm crazy and nothing's going to happen from it, but I've watched this go up and down and up and down and I'm staying, I'm in, I'm not leaving and I'm going to stay there all year and guess who's going to be sad at that and he's going to be like, you're crazy, it's not going to work because he was telling me about these numbers and I was just like, I don't know what he's saying, but a hundred billion people would have to spend money for it to get to $10, but I believe. You know why? Because that's what this podcast is about. It's about believing and knowing what the ultimate goal is and that's for Dogecoin to get to $10. And with your help, we can get it there. So everybody invest so we can all make money because it's fun. At the end of the day, it's entertaining to watch it go up and down. It's like watching, you know, a TV show and it's like, ooh, this is intense, but now it's not. And now we're okay and everything's gonna be fine. You know, it's like, it's an emotional roller coaster. Just do it, but I'll be rich. Um, that being said, we got a great show today. We got a great show today. I'm excited for our guests. We got JT Parr and Chad Goes Deep. So it's gonna be a fun time. Um, but before we get into the show, I just want a special shout out to uh, the Comedy Showcase app. And uh, that's uh, an iPhone app you need to have if you are a fan of stand-up comedy, which pro you probably are. If you're watching this show, you're probably a fan of stand-up comedy. And uh, on this app, they release a bunch of new co content every week, uh, a bunch of new stand-up sets monthly by a bunch of comics like me, uh, a bunch of up-and-coming comics, uh, some younger comics even uh, that you might know. But you could subscribe to it, and uh, all the payments uh, get distributed to all the comedians. That's the greatest part of the about this app is that all of the comedians on the app get paid to put their material on there and it gives them a place for the for their comedy to get to make money through their for their comedy essentially which isn't there isn't a lot of that right now for up and comers back in the day there were a lot of things maybe through comedy central but right now it seems like you have to be a big hitter on Netflix and if you're not what do you do so this is a great app it's called the comedy showcase app check it out download it on your phone and it helps a bunch of us that being said, I got future dates coming up uh, in two weeks, February 19th. I'll be in Austin. So if you want tickets, visit michaelinochi.com and I hope to see you there. And then I am in Vegas at the Laugh Factory, March 11th through 14th. For that, if you're just a fan of the podcast and you hit up the Takeover Pod on Instagram or email me, I will give you tickets to those shows. There are eight shows, Thursday to Sunday, two a night. Make sure you check that out. That being said, I've said that being said four times. Okay, so listen, I can't edit that out. We don't edit the beginning. This is just what it is. I gotta get better at that saying that being said. So whatever, it doesn't matter. The show's gonna be great. And we're gonna get into the show right now because I can, I, I can hear the intro music coming and that means they're playing me off. It's like an Oscar speech, right? I'm giving my speech, the music's playing. That means the intro's about to start, so I gotta go. So here's the show, guys. Thank you for watching. Bye. That's how I start. Takeover. Now there's a lot of things we're gonna get in when we speak and when I speak. And when I speak. All right, did we? We're going. Okay, we're here. We're here with JT and Chad goes deep, which is a pleasure to have them. Right? <laughs> it's Thanks already off to a great start already. Like Chad's feeling it. JT, he's. A little nervous, it's fine. I'm not nervous. You're not? Okay, my bad. I read the room wrong. I'm just bad at I read it wrong. I thought I'm, I'm actually nervous. I'm excited. Uh, yeah, my me therapist too. always tells me your body doesn't know the difference between nervous and excited. What was that? My therapist always tells me your body doesn't know the difference between nervous and excited. I I, I, I believe that because sometimes I'm excited to do shows, but I'm like, am I or am I nervous? But like I'm not nervous because I, I feel fine. Sometimes I'm anxious to go up. Right. Sometimes I'm like, okay, let's go, let's go up. I want to go up. So what is that? Yeah, you well, you always struck me as a guy that didn't really get nervous to do stand up though. It went like, away. Yeah. It goes away after a long time. Yeah. I was for the first time when I did my first set after like the 95 days. Mm -hmm. I think that was the longest I went, like 98 days at the yeah. beginning of the COVID. Yeah. I for sure was a little, but it went. It goes away like 30 seconds in. Yeah. And then like obviously. If I'm in an environment where I don't feel comfortable, like if it's like I'm at a show where like I literally don't have anyone that I really know that well, yeah, I'll get a little bit like nervous. Like if I had to go do like an East Side 
show. Right. And it's like, I, I really have only had conversations with these comics like, hey, what's up? Good to see you. Yeah. Like, they don't, we don't know each other. Really. Right. We don't know each other deeply. But that, I, that gets me going a little bit because I'm like, okay. Because you want to be accepted right. a little bit. No matter what. Big I think time. anyone who denies that is lying. I, I think I'm the opposite, where if, if people I know are there, yeah, then I'm more like, oh, I'm on the precipice of <laughs> losing respect. Oh. You know, whereas oh, yeah, if it's people yeah. I don't know, I'm kind of like, oh, if I, if I bomb, then I, I'll just like, you know, beeline it out of here. And I, 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 that's, I used to have that, mm-hmm. but then I think you go, you do it long enough that you've se- people have seen you do well, and then also right. done bad, yeah. and then you've seen them do bad, and you're like, oh, this, this is just the game. Yeah. So that's yeah. the game. Right. Yeah, so. I sometimes at open mics, if there was someone there who made me nervous, I remember I would like look around before my set to see if they were still in the room, and they would always somehow know that I was about to look at them and be giving me these <laughs> eyes where they were like, "Yeah, I'm still here, asshole." I, I, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm the same way. I would do like the look around and yeah. be like, "Oh, he's in the room. Okay, I gotta, I gotta make sure I'm doing, I'm doing really good." Or if, yeah, if I was on a show and I saw a bigger comic that I've always wanted him to like respect me or I wanted his acceptance I would be like okay I'm just going to do my best material right now and you're not performing even work for that on one person new material. Yeah. and then you find out like they just left anyways <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, not even, yeah. they don't give a shit yeah. they don't care I and think they I do wonder, though I think they do do, I, do we have that for anyone yeah. do yeah. we do that to someone for sure but then if you think that okay are we a little narcissist we all are but I, I think they actually do care and I think they do enjoy that you want their approval, and I think they enjoy not giving it to. I think that's human nature a little bit. Then we should now, when comedy comes back, we should know that we every time we're in a room, we should stop and like go like this in the back and go to someone we don't know. Yeah. And then leave, and then maybe that will change their whole day. Like yeah, 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 yeah. like so you're not out of approval, but like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like really like fuck with them, up. like yeah. And then they'll be like, wow, yeah, you know, they they were going through what we were going through. Yeah. Um, <laughs> How you doing? Cool? Great. You just like to make us nervous moving around and stuff? I'm just yeah, teasing yeah. you. That's our producer, Mark. <laughs> Super Bowl. Thoughts? Did you guys watch it? I did. I did. You did watch it? Yeah. You liked it? It was all right. I, thought, I feel like Tom Brady's Super Bowls are always boring. Yeah. I'm He's so I'm, good. I'm over him, though. But yeah, because... But what about the Seahawks ending where like it took a last second interception on the... One oh, yard right. line that, to win. Like, the you know, Falcons that, one or, was exciting. Or wasn't there like two that he won by like the last second field goal? Oh, maybe. Well, his yeah. first, his, okay, his first one was in 2001. Against the Rams. That's 19 years ago, though. I don't even know if, I mean, these guys are 27. I'm 33. I, I'm 30, but I, I remember that. Yeah. Uh, but I, my football knowledge is very limited, so I'm just going off the last two Tom Brady Super Bowls, I guess. But I do remember that. Yeah. Part. Yeah. yeah, Bono sang at halftime, and it was after 9-11, and he had an American flag stitched into the inside of his leather jacket. That's funny that you're the guy who remembers all the fucking halftime performances. Yeah, very Like, I, I, I remember the Justin Timberlake... Britney uh, Spears, Jack, Nelly, Jack, and the, Aerosmith one. Janet Jackson one. Oh. Where he ripped yeah. the nipple out. I was thinking of the NCAA. And then ever since then, they always do, like, a little five-second delay for that. But um, my whole thing about the Super Bowl is... It's the biggest game of the year, but that's the one game I don't pay attention as much because I'm more about the holiday, mm, the festivities. Right. I'm more about the food, the eating. I don't know. Like, is yeah. that is that big? Is that important for you guys during the Super Bowl? Like, what you're eating and what the environment is? Totally. Like most yeah. of the time, if I'm watching football, which I don't, you guys know, I'm a I'm a big football guy. I I, I I'm alone. Like Joe's the yeah. same way. Like Joe has to like go watch his game. I gotta At watch. The parlor. Nah, I'm not leaving. I'm watching. I'm going to the game. parlor. Yeah, or he has I'm to not watch going it in to his me. element. Yeah. yeah, I'm like that during the season. But then Super Bowl, I'm like, oh, this is a party. It's like Thanksgiving, or like I want to have a good time. Yeah, yeah. I, I get really excited about specific things. I get excited about ruffles and the French onion dip, <laughs> uh, and then the sour cream and onion cheese ruffles. I get excited about ruffles. Ruffles, pretty much. Seven layer dip. I, I, I did something special. I did What'd Chick-fil-A. You oh, you did? Oh, you're wondering, like, well, how? On a I get Sunday. it on Saturday. Oh, I get no. Saturday night, the latest delivery. No, it's awesome. People are like, how do you do that? And you're like, oh, it's going to be leftovers. No, we, we got 90 chicken nuggets. You, you let them cool off. Then you put them in the fridge. And the next day, you put them on a tray in 350. You heat them for, like, 12 minutes. And you pour them out. And it's just, like, brand new. It's pretty brilliant. That sounds great. Yeah. 
I, I, I and like it also that. gets people excited. They're like, how did you do that? <laughs> I'm like, I, I know someone that works for Chick Fil A. Then you get to lie. And do stuff. you put them the, back in the container so it makes them feel special? I don't. I, I know. I put them out on a tray. And I realized I didn't even write Chick-fil-A and I put it on my story and I didn't get as many reactions this year. And I was like, people would probably just thought we made chicken nuggets. Yeah. Well, that could be your legacy. You could be the, the, the Chick-fil-A, Chick-fil-A Super Bowl guy. That, that's something I want to start. That's yeah. actually, I was actually brought you on here to see if you guys could help me. I co sign that. Because yeah. you guys are the I'll, legacy, like, I'll promote stamps. It. You but stamp I'll, who's <laughs> legacy. Really? Well, yeah, the legend, actually. Wow. I'll do things. <laughs> I'll, I'll be like, I'm eating chips, but I know Lenochi's getting Chick-fil-A. Yeah, and I respect the Polynesians. That. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the, I didn't mean the, Polyne- I mean the Polynesian sauce. Am I in trouble? I don't know what's right or what's wrong. Um, yeah, so that was the Super Bowl part we just talked about. Yeah, I, I watched it alone. It was kind of depressing. Really? Yeah. Why? Because I, I had some friends who were supposed to come over, and then he bailed. And I kind of trusted that he had been safe and gotten tested. We were all going to get tested yeah. beforehand. And then my girlfriend was going to drive up to watch it with me, but she like doesn't give a fuck about football. Yeah. So and she had just been up here for like a couple of days. I was like, babe, you can just stay down and wait. And you know, see. just like or just like this. So I did mushrooms. Yeah. To kind of uh, make it special. You did mushrooms. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. By yourself. Yeah. Hold on. There's a lot of questions I have. Wait. You did mushrooms by yourself. One. Mm-hmm. What is that like? What is that like? I forgot how to talk sometimes. <laughs> With social media, you don't feel that alone because you can kind of wait. You, <laughs> you can post a little bit, or you can text somebody. I would be terrified. I'd be like, "Am I doing something wrong?" Or, or, or like, I would be scared that like this is inappropriate. Wait, did you go like go live? No, no, no. Uh, but I would, and I have my brother. I'll I'll text my brother. Like, hey, is this okay if I post this? And he's oh, he's yeah, always yeah, really yeah. game. As long as you have a safe, out. someone safe. Wait, so you're just on much, but like, are you giggling by yourself, like, or you just it's for yourself, like therapeutic? Probably more the latter. Really? Yeah, probably more. I was like, I'm feeling kind of sad about this day. I don't really know how to process it. I was like, maybe if I, I'd felt like I'd been kind of forcing the issue in other parts of my life, like career-wise and romantically. I was like, maybe if I do some mushrooms, it'll kind of, uh, kind of give me a little boost through that I, stuff. I, I, I agree with what you're saying. I'm, a, I'm actually uh, a mushroom guy. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. And I feel like it, it does kind of reset me and make me go, okay, nothing matters. Like what, are, what are we stressed out about? Mm-hmm. Like just, just chill and just be happy that you're doing what you love, and then just take what you get. You uh, know what I mean? I, I've done mushrooms with him, and uh, I'm more uh, giggly on mushrooms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I kind of just like, oh, this, <laughs> he makes you just think very deeply. <laughs> and he asks these questions, and you're like, I don't fucking know, man. <laughs> like, you're about, your, about your like family and stuff, and you're like. Like, what's important to you? And I'm like, oh. Shit. <laughs> you know what's funny is I do both. I actually you do. do. Like, I'm, I'm one of those who's like, like, I like to like walk around and kind of like, I don't know, like hold court a little bit, but like make sure everything's going right with everyone and be like, how are you doing? And I check in with him. Right. And then like he would ask that and I'd be like, okay, here we, do, here we, here we go. And we yeah. talk like yeah. that and we talk about deep shit, but then I'd be like, all right, let's break out. That's perfect. Fun. You're ready to go, roll I'm in any direction. Jump out of it. I like to yeah. jump in and out and go, oh, cool. I like where this is going. Then we'll talk. I'm like, all right, that was fun. Now let's go back to like the, let's go look at something. Like, yeah. like I'll jump out of it. But I do do the deep shit too. Yeah. Right. Because that's why I, I do like it because it, it, it makes me tap into a part of the brain that I I wouldn't necessarily no existed sometimes. all the door all the rooms in your brain are open and you can walk into any of them but yeah. you're not trying to like sleep or spend the whole day in there you're trying to move around and check out the whole mansion of your head i honestly think it's a it's like it's if i had kids and they were like 18 19 i'd be like let's do it if i was oh, if i could handle it at that age or but i'd be like here do it with your best friends for the first time and just explore yeah, I would obviously other drugs. I'm like, no, no, no. If they're good kids, I'm down. If my if kids, I know that they can handle it. If my kid's been booted from hope. school and you know, no, just he, like you know, he's getting fights all. Maybe if he's yeah, fight, if he's yeah. like a criminal, yeah, <laughs> if he's like a bad, if he's like stealing bikes and he's not graduated in high school, no. But like, I no hope, shrooms for no you, no shrooms buddy. for you. But if you graduate and you're gonna go to college and I know you're gonna be fine, I'm like, I'll I'll let you do it at home. I'll let you and your friends. I'll leave. You know, maybe I'll do it. Like I, I, maybe I probably wouldn't the first time. I would let him get more experience. I would wait till he's thirty. But by then, I'll, maybe I'm. You're too old. Seventy. I, I went to a Tom Petty concert right before he died. Actually, I think it was his second to last show, and my dad was there, and he did mushrooms. After the show, he was like, "I'm on mushrooms," and I was like, "Are you really?" And he was like, "He got embarrassed." He was like, "No, I'm not." And I was like, "Yeah, you are." And he was like, "Yeah, I am." 
Wouldn't you have loved to know he was doing it so you could have been like, I would have done it with you? We were kind of sitting far away from each oh, other. Oh, you didn't go with No, him. we went together, but the seats were separate. And then yeah. he afterwards, he was just like kind of blissed out. And I could tell he was a little... G- giggly? He, he was different. I couldn't, but I couldn't do much by myself. I'd be like, I need someone to entertain my thoughts and also be silly or giggly. I was worried about that. I was a little scared when I did them. There's certain people you also could tell you like, Man, I would love to do mushrooms with him, but I don't think he could handle it. Oh, interesting. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I would love to do it with Joe. <laughs> Maurice. Joe. Yeah, but I don't think he would be able to handle it. Yeah, I'm getting the visuals. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why the room is moving like that. It's annoying. Yeah. yeah. He would like over there's certain people you would be like they're they're <laughs> overthinking situations and it's not uh, it's I, not I, good. I haven't done him with Fard, but I've talked to Fard when he's on them and he gets really sweet. Like, Kevin mm-hmm. will be like... He is a sweet guy, just sometimes angry, but yes. Mm-hmm. But if he does mushrooms, it, it accentuates the sweetness almost completely. Yeah. I, I, I literally become just a, a, a child. I'm like what I was as a kid. I'm just like running around silly. Yeah. It sometimes I do that too. I turn into like a kind of primate. I start running on like all fours and I'm just happy to be like a It brings a, the best out wild of people, animal. I think. I, yeah, I, uh, I took my time. I told Fard I was doing it. He's like, what have you learned? <laughs> like, what, dude? He's like, tell me what you learned tomorrow. Report back. And he texts me the next day. He's like, what did you learn? And I'm like, I think I need to speak up. (laughs) (laughs) Like a dad checking in with you. Yeah. And uh, I think I prefer being alone. What? On shrimp. Really? Mm Mm-hmm. I'm a weirdo like that. I'm like an introvert. I'm like, all my favorite things to do are alone. I like to be alone when I'm like sober and like just chilling. But like, yeah. I feel I like to feed off the like connecting with different people. You're actually like, you want to feed off the room, baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. Also, like, I mean, even if I was, I'm at a point where I've done it enough to where like I can do it with like strangers, or or even if it's like Molly or some some, some other like drugs that really get your brain going. Like getting to like tapping in and jumping from couple to couple. Like, uh, you know, I was at. Like in, I was at Joshua Tree and like back in October, and I was with people I didn't necessarily know that well, and just bouncing from them, mm. and like going, oh, it's what's a great up? and then like going yeah. to someone else and be like, and then seeing them later, and be like, we had that <laughs> moment, dude. Right, right, <laughs> you know right. What I mean? It's yeah. just silly. I do the same thing. I go to a party in Palm Springs every year with like fifty people, and everyone does drugs, and and yeah. I'll tell my friends when I go, I'm like, hey, you're not gonna see me once the party starts because I just you move from pod to, pod to pod to pod to pod. Yeah, and you're just going, and you're like, what's going on here? What are we talking about here? And you just tap into that. Yeah. energy for a little bit and then you pull out and then you jump into the next stream and it's, it's very a, exciting it's and also once you leave those people you always have that connection that yeah. thing you're like okay mom just don't judge this is this is life this is fine fast forward through this part if you don't like to hear about it My is mom your mom listen, watching she listens to all the podcasts that's nice. oh really yeah I'm so like, this is the the <laughs> <laughs> um that being said we'll just i'll, I'll bring this up because i talk about this up top a little bit but like um this is like deeper thoughts that I get that I think I'm being like a, like a smart, like, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. Intellectual? Like like a guy who's like a <laughs> motivational speaker type of guy. Like, uh, like, like I was thinking about speed bumps. Mm-hmm. Okay. They're, they exist in the world. Like in real life, mm-hmm. you, let's say you're driving and you're on your way somewhere and like every time you are on a street that has speed bumps, you're like, this is... This is fucking annoying. Like, I got to go with these speed bumps. It's losing my momentum. But it is for a good cause. But you get past it, and you still get to where you're going. And that's, like, kind of a metaphor for life, too. Mm-hmm. Like, life gives us speed bumps. And in the moment, it's annoying. But we're still headed towards where we're supposed to go. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? Completely. But so, like, you just have to recognize that when stuff is happening to you, that that is a speed bump. And it's not you know, a never ending hill or a slow it's not it's not something that's gonna last forever. It doesn't mean you have to turn around or yeah. it doesn't mean you have to give up. Does this make sense? I feel like we're going deep with Chad right now. It totally, totally does. Yeah. I mean I, I had a speed bump yesterday. My uh, veneer I, I have veneers. Yeah. yeah. One of them broke off. No. Like part really? of it. Yeah, look. Wait, oh, how no, many do you have? Oh interesting. Is it front? I've I never have, seen I've never four, seen four under two. Yeah. That's interesting. It's but easy. you have it's all kind of, seven? Uh just these front I think it's uh, yep, seven. How maybe. did it break off? Oh, dude, I was eating sausage and it just like popped off. I was like, what? Sausage? Yeah, and yeah, sausage I, I was, is in the heart. I know. That's why I was like, I was like, I was like sausage. Um, <laughs> so and then I, so I, it popped off and then I was like, I was gonna bet on the game, and I was like, this is a life lesson not to bet on the game because I need to save cash right now. 
I don't know if that's a speed bump. I don't bump. know if that's a speed bump. Well, who are you going to bet on? Uh, I think I was going to bet on the Buccaneers, I think. Really? Yeah. But anyways, but I was like, the, um, that's not really a speed bump. But, but it, it was like an the emotional, the emotional roller coaster you're going through when that happens. Because yeah. I've had, I've knocked my teeth out. And then I, these front four are veneers too. But it's yeah. like, I've had, um, like a, when college, when I knocked them out, that the anxiety, the emotional anxiety and stress you get from like a chipped tooth or something like that mm-hmm. is for sure a fucking speed bump. Yeah, and I, I think I think what it was, it, uh, I think yeah, it's the 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 life lesson of like how you look at it because I could have been like pouty of like you know all oh, my teeth are fucked up whatever. Yeah. But I was kind of like, um, it's, uh, yeah, you just sort of every um, situation or thing that you ca- encounter, you can always see the positive in it. Yeah, or just see that it's temporary. Yeah. The speed bumps temporary. Some of them are little. Fast ones. You ever go on the fast ones? You're like, da, 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 da. yeah. Same with life. Sorry, that was disrespectful, guys. Sorry about that. I also the thing with speed bumps is, or just obstacles is that I think the one that you're facing always seems like the worst one you've ever had to deal with. And yeah, especially that's true. if your life's going in a good direction, it'll be a new problem that you haven't had to really deal with, and it'll be threatening to you because whatever the obstacles in the way of is something you care about. But when I look back on shit that fucked me up or that was hard to get past, yeah, it doesn't seem so bad in retrospect. You know what I mean? It's yeah, one hundred percent. It's only in the moment I'm like, "What the fuck is this obstacle? There's no way I can get past this. My life is over." But when I look back on all of them, I'm like, "Oh, that wasn't that bad." Mm-hmm. Yeah, I yeah, I, I also think it's it's. I always remind myself of this time, like the more time that passes, it's inevitable that's going to get better. I mean, obviously, more bad stuff can happen, but it it literally always every bad thing or traumatic thing that's happened in my life, it's always gotten better or led to something that was a great for life Mm -hmm. like you know what's the like obviously i'm fortunate i've had a great life but i guess the first traumatic thing that happened outside of like family old people in your family dying something like that what people go through was like a breakup in college led to me coming here Mm -hmm. to la so that was great that that happened because if it didn't happen if you hadn't maybe i would have not done this you would have stayed out in florida with the yeah, girl maybe yeah maybe or yeah I would, maybe i would have fallen in love and and gotten a real job and had a family and you know who knows but like that trauma made me really reevaluate what i was doing with my life at 23 and thinking like what did i want what do i really want what makes me happy like when you go through these traumatic moments they like they first of all they humble you and then they make you kind of analyze what what your current situation is and like what's important to you and then like it's kind of like in a way like mushrooms like kind of sometimes if you are alone on mushrooms i would assume you're in your head thinking about stuff and 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 hopefully you have a positive mindset that's the hard part is trying to be positive in those traumatic moments Mm -hmm. or those speed bumps you know what i mean yeah the the, the speed bumps and the setbacks that's where you gain wisdom and i was listening to one guy who was he's talking about he's like would you rather have a life, given the the knowledge you have now, or like the 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 development you've had? Would you rather have a life, you know, full of? Or it was along the lines of like, would you rather have all your wins or all your losses to to sort of, um, what what Build helped character. develop you more as a human being? It's yes. like if you had a life full of all wins, it's like what kind of person would you be an asshole i would yeah. you'd be a complete asshole you would what <laughs> i would 100 percent take no that. but it's not it's not like a life full of wins it's more of like it was more of like i get where did you learn where did you really learn about what's important i get what you're saying like it's almost like listen if you meet have you ever met someone who who's come from like a very blessed wealthy upbringing maybe even like a celebrity's child in mm-hmm. your time out in hollywood have you met like a famous person's kid and then they're actually like very humble and chill don't you find that fascinating <laughs> yeah. you're like why are you not an asshole yeah like how did you come out so great versus like like you know like the maybe the comic we know who like came from like a struggling background something that we didn't maybe experience personally that we like even when they start to get success they're still very like humble and nice like they you understand why why they are cuz like they came from something that wasn't guaranteed or as easy and mm-hmm. then you know and then sometimes with guys like I feel like I've been an asshole throughout my life sometimes too like mm-hmm. you get like this the covid this whole last year for sure humbled me mm. made me yeah. appreciate just like going up I'm like that's all I care about like I just want to go up 
Yeah. I want to go up and then all that other shit is out of my control. I'm happy. Like, I don't, I'm not in a mansion. I'm not, like, who cares? I just want to drive, get to the show, go up, hang out, and then laugh with the guys, and then that's it. For now, that's what feeds my soul. It's yeah. the best. Yeah. Um, let's get to uh, our first segment. Ready? All right, this is the first segment of the show we're going to get to, and uh, it's called A Story of the Week, okay? So I'm going to read you guys a story and, uh, you know, just kind of feel it out, you know, feel, feel the vibe out. You, you, you'll like it. Cool. And, uh, you know, I just want to kind of get your feedback after it, but like kind of like try to, it's not going to be too long, and I'll read it as best as I can. I'm not a great out loud reader. Is that the right term? So whatever. Mm -hmm. If you want to make fun of me, go ahead. But like, this is what we're gonna do, okay? Um, this one's called a. Uh, it's titled "A Husband's Eternal Gift." It's nice. It's actually kind of relevant with what's coming up. All right. Every Valentine's Day, John gave Sue a bouquet of flowers, and a note that always said the same five words: "My love for you grows." He did this for all of the forty-six years they were married. Then, sadly, John died, and as, Valentine, as Valentine's Day rolled around, Sue knew not to expect anything. But when a bouquet of, arrived with a note from John, Sue, heartbroken and angry, called the florist to report the cruel trick. But the florist assured the widow it wasn't a mistake. Before he passed away, your husband prepared for many years and asked us to guarantee that you would continue to get those flowers every Valentine's Day. When she hung up the phone, she read the attached card and said, my love for you is eternal. <laughs> that was sweet. So are we supposed to riff on that? <laughs> Wait, what? Isn't that a beautiful story? Yeah, that's yeah. nice. That's nice as shit. Is that true? Do I know if it's true? I do not know if it's true. I kind of I lost. Wait, so at the end the guy died and then she wrote him a nice thing about him? <laughs> it was a paragraph story. I lost. <laughs> I actually got because I'm not. I'm not. No, I'm having a crazy day. I'm having a crazy day. I'm not captivating. Day. Day. That's it's not you. It's not you at all. I think you lost yeah. him in bouquet. Bouquet. <laughs> bouquet. I thought that was just his South Florida dialect. Okay, so here, 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 here's, here's what happened. Every Valentine's Day, this guy he would get his wife flowers every Valentine's Day, and then on the note it would say, "My love for you grows." Then he died, right? And then the first Valentine's Day after he died, the wife got another bouquet of flowers. And she was like, what the, what the fuck, basically? Like, how, why, how could you do this to me? Like, oh. this is a sick joke because, like, why did the florist do this? So she called the florist, like, what are you doing? Like, why the fuck would you send me a right. bouquet? Like, my husband said, this is horrible. And they're like, ma'am, I swear to God, this isn't a mistake. Before your husband died, he gave us enough money to make sure that you would have a bouquet of flowers every Valentine's Day for as long as you lived. And she was like, okay. And then she hung up and then she grabbed the flowers and read the card and the card said, my love for you is eternal. Oh, that's fucking beautiful. <laughs> what, yeah. a, what a great guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A true legend. Doesn't that give you a little bit of chills or no? Totally. Yeah. I like that. He laughed immediately. Yeah, I thought it was funny. It just makes, no. me want to, <laughs> makes me want to do a better job, yeah. It does? Yeah, for so sure. So it moved you. Yeah, of course. Did they move you, or you just thought this is silly? Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, it's okay. You're I mean, it took, me, it took me listening Here, twice, not, so I'm not, it did I'm not ahead of the class. Could have been yeah. part, of, part of my fault. The reason I pick these stories is because, like, when I'm when I'm on the internet, like, looking for these stories, I read them and they get me going. <laughs> Where do you find them? Oh, really? I'm just, I'm just searching, dude. What I'm do you just, Google? Like, uh, like proof of like, love, uh, heartwarming stories. So you're you're a big romantic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm I'm a, I'm I'm reading like heartwarming stories. I'm just trying to grab some right. on the internet, and that's why I'm like, like if you're listening to the podcast and you have a story, email them in. Like that would be good. Right. I mean, the whole point is trying to make someone cry on the podcast. <laughs> Wait, so, so, so you read these by yourself, like yeah, to, yeah, yeah. to like as yeah, like yeah, motivation yeah. to it, like it, boost your. No, no, no. Well, I, I do it for the show. I read them. Oh, by okay. For the show. I, th I thought it was like what you do in your spare time. No, I, I do have a. I will watch like motivational videos on YouTube. Sometimes. Oh, me Those too. Yeah, yeah. Those are yeah. Fun. Yeah. Those are yeah. Fun. Yeah. just random ones. Like ones will have like uh, like you know, Arnold, like, like 
Arnold's speeches or, or, or Rocky speeches or they'll have like uh, um, Vince Lombardi speeches. No one's going to hit you as hard as life like can the, hit you. Or like Will Smith like speeches from the movie where he was like with his son. Pursuit of Happiness. Yeah, yeah like the, the, they, they Al cut Al Pacino these, they cut, on yes, any given Sunday. They cut these videos together and they're fun to listen to. But this was like, I'll read these stories and like I'll, some of them I'm like, this is not good. I read this one and it makes me go like this. When you're alone and you read it, you go like this. Like it makes you do that. It makes you go, like, so I'm like, I, I I would read it and then I'm like, reading it to other people is like hilarious to me because if I can get them to react to it like that. Yeah. Like you got it. You're like, this is silly. Like, yeah. This is funny. But if you were alone and read this, you'd be like, huh. No, yeah. I, I think, uh, I, yeah, maybe it's more of like uh, my res- natural like resistance to uh, to more you have deeper. In, you have but, intimacy issues. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you were like, now nah, you got it, and you're like, oh, this is beautiful. It's nice. It's nice. It's good it makes shit. You, it makes you feel different. For sure. But no goosebumps. No goosebumps. I'm sorry. Man. But it could just be the day. I mean, you hit me on a different day. I, that might. It could be the day. That might be, be exactly what I needed though. to trigger me. Yeah. But yeah. We got like, nobody actually yeah. goes to church on Sunday and listens to the priest and goes, oh. Do they? What's that noise you made? Like the, that was like, like, that, kinda, that was like, like, like coming. A, it, 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 it was a coming oh. one, but it's more like, my coming, yes, you're right, it could be a subtle come, but more like that feeling when you go, like at the end of movies, like I, the end of A Beautiful Mind. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the end of A Beautiful Mind, you're like this, you're like, I want to make something this beautiful. Yeah, I, 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 I like who, who was saying, it depends on the day, because I'm more like kind of, uh, if you showed me a picture of like a dog right now with like yeah. three legs, that would give me like the... Oh. Do we have a dog of three legs, really? <laughs> and we just want to be like a dog of three legs. I don't know. I, 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 wait, wait, Wade's up there. Oh, oh hey, Wade. Here we go. Bro. Dude, I, I'm, yeah, shout out to Wade. I, I, I'm, I'm applying for dogs right now. You're going to do another one? Oh, but the other I, one was your family dog. That's my girlfriend's. No, the one that passed away. Oh, yeah, that's my mom's, yeah. yeah. She, she got another uh, golden I want to sit in it. Like, my sister's dog passed you're away, sitting? and they got one like three months later. I go, no, I'm going to sit with this pain for a while. Yeah. You want to grieve. Yeah. And then, and then now I do a bit about it on stage, and it's 50-50. Sometimes it gets like it does really well, and then sometimes the crowd's all sad. <laughs> go, well, this is comedy, man. I have to try it. I like yeah. those bits. Um, all right, that's story of the week, guys. That's a story for the week. And if you have suggestions, please email them into the podcast. The email's right here below me. Uh, make sure you edit that in, Mark. Thank you. Uh, and then we'll get to our next segment. <laughs> All right, guys, our next segment is the dating detective. People sometimes say I can be a good dating detective. So now I have you here. We're going to read our email from a, a listener's question and, you know, we'll try to solve their problems a little bit. You know, we're going to be we're going to do a little detective work. OK. <clears throat> hey, Mike. This isn't a solving story either, but I like to start it like that. Hey, Mike. Hey, Mike. I started seeing someone I met on Plenty of Fish, and they wanted to be official pretty much immediately. I like him. He is good in bed, and I am really attracted to him, but deep down, I know it is probably a red flag that he is so obsessed with me, and he barely knows me. He isn't obsessed in a way where he tries to control me or be up my ass 24-7, but he's obsessed with me by telling me how perfect I am and how happy he is with me. But then I also notice him liking girls' pics on Instagram. And I confronted him about it and he said, it's not that serious and if it bothers me, he'll stop. I am not sure what to make of all of this and if it's worth seeing where things go. I could really use your help and advice. Yeah, I mean, the guy's like probably, you know, 20% full of shit, but that's not horrible. I'd roll with it. You think he's full of shit? A little bit, but not all the way. I don't think he even is probably conscious of how he's full of shit. I think he probably just goes into things without thinking too much and he just kind of follows his feelings. Sometimes that'll take you into directions that you, a more cerebral person might have avoided. But I think I think he's probably being genuine. I would, and she seems to like him, so I would just do it. And and the fact that he said I'll stop if it bothers you, I mean it's not a great thing he was doing. But if he's willing to talk about it, that's half the battle. I don't know. I will Did say I based off of the information I have, they're younger. I'm going to mm-hmm. say early twenties because you are nitpicking at some social media stuff. That's something that I 
could care less about if I even if I had my girlfriend and she was you know liking guys model pictures which they, girls don't do what guys do um, I would I would just be like, also how do you even oh you would see their name at the bottom yeah. but I'm like well, I wouldn't care about that stuff but also hey buddy stop liking them just look at them <laughs> Yeah. What are we doing? Like, I'm not, I'm not saying it's a though. lie, but it's like a white lie. <laughs> yeah, he's he's like, supporting. every guy he's supporting. Is that yeah. what you said? Like, every guy is always going to look. That's just nature. Monogamy is a very hard thing, but that's what makes love beautiful is when you can do it. That's why it's special, right? We could agree ap- across the board on that. We're all good men. We just read that story. We got emotional. That's why you should listen to us. But I'm saying, you don't need to like. That's simple. Just look at it. But... She's complaining about a guy that's obsessed with her. Isn't that what you all want so bad? You have what you finally... It, it, this is a great situation where like you finally have what you always dreamed of and now you're complaining. Yeah, that, I, thought, I thought it was interesting that she was complaining about his social media, like liking other girls, but like, aren't they like a week in? Like, how, how far yeah, into dating said, are they? Why, why I started she... seeing someone on Plenty of Fish, which is already like... I, isn't that like... That's like for really... I don't know who uses that, but and they wanted an official pretty much. It's not a hip one. It's we, not hip yeah. like him. It's kind of like wow, you you're really it feels like, old fashioned. The other ones are yeah. not working out, so you're using this. Yeah, yeah or old fashioned. But <laughs> I I like him. He is good in bed, and I am really attracted to him. Good things. What is going on there? It That's sounds good, cool. but he's obsessed with me. Like he like he's he sounds like he's being a great boyfriend. Well, I think that's why she was a little thrown off by the... Because he's coming at her. He's like, you're the only one for me. I'm crazy about you. And then right. she goes on his Instagram and it's like, you're liking all these other girls' things. Oh, so she wants yeah. to know... Oh, I see. She wants to know, is he, is he, is he playing legit? Her? Yeah, is he legit? I think she likes that he's obsessed with her. But I think it kind of... When I get obsessed with people, like I'm, I'm very obsessed with my partner. Yeah. And it freaks people out because they're like, why are you so obsessed with me? Like, if someone's obsessed with me, it freaks me out too. No, I think that so, if yeah. you find the right person, you are in the beginning. Everybody yeah. is. That's the honeymoon yeah. stage. But I think it can make the other person worried that that people aren't used to that. They're not used to someone thinking they're perfect. So I think when they hear that, they're a little bit like, what's going on over there? Like, but even if yeah. he doesn't really think it, he's saying it to make you feel good, right? Isn't that what you're supposed to do as a boyfriend? You mm-hmm. make them... Go, yeah. go, goals can be a little bit more sensitive and, and, and feel uh, insecure sometimes, so he's making her feel better, but obviously she's she's coming across like she feels smothered. I don't, th- I don't no? think she feels smothered. I think Maybe she does. I think she feels afraid that he's kind of uh, wild, that he just is saying he's like all into her, but that, am I wrong? I no, I don't know. know. I mean, we're just doing our detective work. I, I, think, I think she likes him. I think she likes him. Well, yeah, I, I, well, we know she likes him just from the basic... And that she, she wrote, wrote in. Email in. She wrote in. You like a guy yeah. if you're writing in. If you're writing in, she likes, likes him. him. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think this guy could either be a novice with love, and that's why he's obsessed, you know? He's a novice. Could, could or be. he's a player. I see, <laughs> well, I think you say he could be I a player just from liking, uh, <laughs> just from liking <laughs> photos? I don't know. I, I think there's a third one where he just gets obsessed with people. Is he putting her on a pedestal? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then, and he won't think she. You know, they won't be perfect. Forever. I would love to see a picture yeah. of both of them. They're both hot. You think they're both hot? I don't know. It's better that way. I would love to say something and be honest, Sorry. but I'm not going to say it because I want people to keep writing in stories. Well, I, well, I, what you, I what wonder if the girls' photos like are they models or are they like or are they friends? friends? Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that makes a difference. I noticed him liking girls' pics on Instagram and confronted him about. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, first of all, if he's just liking random pics that they know in their circle. Then that's like not that big of a deal. Or are they his friends? Are, like, do they? Does he like, follow them, or is it, are we talking about the the girls on Instagram? Or are they, but are they his friends? He's like, yeah, I liked her photo, but that's like my friend, you know, Maxine. I, I went to her wedding. Ultimately, she's asking. I'm not sure what to make of all of this, and is it worth seeing things go through? Yes. Yes, of course. Yeah. You have something. Of course. You obviously like him. You're just a little scared. I think yeah. we're all scared. It's the beginning. It's scary. Nobody out there. wants to get hurt. That's what it comes down to. Heartbreak warfare, like John Mayer said. Yeah, John Mayer said that. Why am I talking to the iPad? <laughs> John Mayer said, I feel like this is her, and I'm like, it's her I'm right there. I like that you're anthropomorphizing it. Hey, Good guys, yeah. listen, John Mayer said this, and he's romantic with a lot of women in LA. Can I tell her something, too? Yeah, here. Hey, it's good to see you. Um, I just want you to know that trust in a relationship is not always about trusting the other person. It's trusting that you'll be okay no matter what happens. And you just have to trust that and go into this with a full, open heart. That was good. I thought that was sweet. 
Do you want me to speak to her now? <laughs> no, that was a little, no. a little patronizing Whatever. at the end when I gave her that. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, no, it's not. If she wasn't an iPad, I wouldn't have done that. Well, I mean, I think that, yeah, I, I think ultimately at the end of the day, you're, you know, you're overthinking it, which most people do. Yeah. And you just got to roll with it. You're just, you're hitting some speed bumps. And that's what we do on the podcast. We bring it all back around. And maybe you're hitting a big speed bump. Maybe you're hitting a smaller speed bump. But either way, you're on your way to love. Yeah. And him liking some pictures are just duh, 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 little speed bumps. You haven't even gotten in a fight yet. You said he's good in bed. That's great. That's she, great. She it, said she's very attracted to him. And you're yeah. very attracted to him. It sounds it, like you just are a little scared to fully open up because you don't want to get hurt because of something previously happened in your life, maybe. Well, it's like the samurai said, too much mind. She has too much mind. You have too much mind. Go with the flow. Enjoy it. Stop thinking about it so much. Whatever happens will happen. But I like this guy. Trust, yeah, trust him until he gives you a reason not to. And I don't think yeah. liking, you know, it depends on who the girls were, but liking Instagram photos <laughs> isn't, you know, it's not the yeah. end of it. Turn the lights on on your dolphin helmet yeah. and enjoy the ride. That's for good luck. If you need good luck, we just push this button and, <laughs> and the dolphin thing lights up. Nice. You know, I used to always push that for years. I would push that before dolphin games, like back in like when I had this thing in 2002 or something. It never really worked. Never like they would still lose. And I was like, if I do it, <laughs> they're gonna win. And I would, I would treat it like I wouldn't overuse it. Right, right, right. I, right. I want to use it this week. And it never really worked. Okay, so dating detective. We do this every week. Write in your stories. Email right here below. I'll help you get closure. Whether you have a question, we're not really looking for stories. We're looking for certain questions that you might have. Or closure you need in certain dating situations that you had that maybe weren't that great for you. Okay? Thank you. All right. We'll just do uh, some final thoughts here, guys. Um, what did you What did you really... How did you feel? How did you feel being here? Did you? I'll bet you... How about this? You didn't expect this. <laughs> what do you mean I didn't expect this? I don't know. What, what, did you, what did you expect from this podcast? Did you... Now, here. Look this, at me. We can make eye contact. Yeah. Do you feel like you gained something from being here today? Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm ready night. for the speed bumps. And I like knowing <laughs> that you're romantic. Yeah. Uh, I had fun. It was a good hang. It's always good to see you. Yeah. 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 It's good. Hang. I like the segments too. I like the setup. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I enjoyed them. I thought you guys were great. You gave great feedback. I thought we learned a lot about each other. We learned about the speed bumps. We, we, we were closer. We know that we could do mushrooms together one day mm -hmm. and it would be fine. Maybe you would probably wander off a little bit. Yeah, I'd come, if, if you wanted to watch like South Park or something, I'd watch. South Park? Yeah. Or you have Tom and Jerry and then you put the volume very low to where it still makes noise, but then you have music and then you put that under the TV and then you watch it and then you get confused about what's real. Oh. That's a fun thing to do to your mind. You're like, <laughs> wait, was that, is that from the show? And oh, then that's you look at it. Yeah, it's it's a it really crazy. fucks you up. It's yeah. like if you put like like house music or something under a show yeah. that has like good noise, like like that that type of house music, and then you have Tom and Jerry going yeah. with a little bit, and you like will think like is the sound have that Tom and Jerry beat in it? Like what's it's it's actually it gets you real giggly. You're like wait, what is real? Yeah, <laughs> I I think I'd like to watch um. Like Gladiator or something, you know, because I'm that, like, because then you get so invested in the story, you're like, he's fighting for his murdered wife and son, and he's doing it, and he's getting out there, and he's gonna get revenge, and you just get really into the story, you're like, and you're like amazed that like this guy is really doing this shit, you know what I mean? No, that's a classic movie, but yeah, or having it on, and yeah. then just dipping in and out of the room to like watch it. I used to, mm. we used to in college put Fear and Loathing. Um, oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's like the best movie for it. And then you would hear it in other rooms, like, "Mother, I feel like I'm in a fucking reptile zoo." And you'd be like, and then you would like turn your head and be like, "What was that?" And you're like, "Oh yeah, that's the movie." Yeah. Like having those weird background sounds that make it go. And then you're, and then you look at your friend, and all of your guys' eyes are all just pure black, and you're like. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, guys. Uh, like, subscribe. Uh, this next part of if, if you are big fans of uh, these guys and you had a fun time uh, we will continue this next segment on the Patreon segment so check out our Patreon at the takeover slash uh, or the patreon.com slash the takeover it doesn't matter I messed up but you guys know how to find everything because it's in the description uh, this is this week's guest J thank you JT Parr and Chad Goes Deep and um, you know check us out on all Musical platform, whatever. It, you know what I'm, this is what all podcasts do. I messed up, whatever. You know what I'm doing. Like, subscribe, share, and uh, we'll see you guys 
next week. Bye.